Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. Welcome back to another video in our Lender for AI Devs series. In this video, we're going to take the pillow that we made in our previous video and apply a material to it. And then I'm going to teach you how UV mapping works. So I'll explain what UV mapping is in a second once we demonstrate what this looks like with the material on it. So the first thing you need to know is that the material tab is right here. So select your object and you can go to material and you can click on new. And we'll call this um, fabric. And we're going to get a fabric texture so that we can apply it to this object here. And I went to texturehaven.com and I looked through their different textures and these are free textures that are available for download. Um, they have a Patreon, so I encourage you to donate if you can. I downloaded this and I saved it to my downloads folder, so I will be finding it there, but you probably want to save it somewhere better if you're working on a real project. And we're going to go into the shading tab. Now the shading tab isn't particularly special except that it's just set up so that we can edit our our material as well as view it in material mode. Okay, so material mode is really just allowing us to see this with lighting. Sort of they take this 3D photo and apply that as lighting to your scene so that this is not what it's not representative of the lighting in your actual scene or what your camera will even look like, but it does give you a really nice illumination to view your materials. Hopefully that makes sense. So this is our material as it is right now using nodes. And if you are not in object mode, make sure you are because some different things happen if you're in world mode. Now we could just change the color of this and you know set it to something like that but this doesn't look very much like fabric to me and even if we change the roughness which i'm going to have you do right now change the roughness hopefully you can see that all right up to one and now it's at least not smooth but it still looks nothing like fabric so the way we want to do that is bring in our material so i'm going to do an add and we're going to do input and if we take a Let's see, and the wrong one. Texture is what I meant to say. So if we're in texture, we can do image texture. So we want to open, and we're gonna open up, let me go to my downloads, and we'll go to, where is it, fabric. And we need to find the color and I believe I want color two, because I think color one was red, and I'm going to do color two. So we're going to open that, and we could just feed this directly into base color. But something's not right here. You'll see there's kind of a hint that maybe this is the right material here, but it's all messed up. And this is because of UV mapping. So UV mapping is... I, when I describe this to people, I always like to think of like a, a, a globe that you would see in a school classroom. So classroom globe, maybe something like this. So you can imagine that when this globe was created, they had to print out the map, but they didn't obviously have a spherical printer. They weren't printing this on the outside. They printed it out as paper, and then that paper was cut and glued in a way so that it wraps onto this globe. So we need to do sort of the same thing for any shape in Blender as well if we want materials to apply to them properly. If you just have a very static color that doesn't have any texture to it, this doesn't matter as much. Like if I disconnect this, if it, you know, make this metallic or something, give it some shininess, it doesn't really matter because we don't have to apply a texture, but as soon as we want to apply a texture, well, now we've got trouble. So what we need to do is UV map this. And you can do that in UV editing mode. And this automatically put me into edit mode. So if you're not in edit mode, you can switch into it. And then we want to select this shape here and basically unwrap it. 
But what I'm going to show you is that you can do this a couple different ways. So I can select this. I've selected one thing on it. I'm going to select, well, we'll just do it the easiest way first. So I'll just hit A to select everything. And you'll see that some points are sort of laid out onto this texture swatch here. We're going to go to UV and we're going to do Smart UV Project. OK. And what this does is it sort of tries to unwrap things in an intelligent way. And if we switch into material shading mode, you can see that this it looks at least looks a little better. So that's that's good, except the size is way off. And you'll notice that the the piping around the edge looks really weird. And you'll also notice that there's a seam right here and probably another seam somewhere. Looks like yeah, maybe a seam right there too. So it would be nice if we had some control over where seams were and over how things showed up, what size they were. Well, the good news is you can do that. I just wanted to show you that you have that option when you're in edit mode to edit the UVs and, and unwrap it that way. So now here's the way I prefer to do it. First of all, we're going to select these tubes here first. And let's, let's see, select linked. And we're going to hide this with the H key. So that doesn't delete it, it just hides it. And then we'll select this one, select linked H. Okay, so now we've got our, just our cylinder. That's a little bit easier to work with. We want to create seams. And fortunately, there's a really easy way to do this. So we can come in and select this. We can hit Alt, and that'll select this entire edge here. We'd like this to be a seam. So we're going to say UV and Mark Seam, and it'll show up as red. We want to do this on the other side as well. So I'm going to go to UV, Mark Seam. And then we'd also like to put another seam. There has to be a seam somewhere because this, this circular texture won't be perfectly matched up. So let's pick this this one under here and we can select just by shift selecting these let's just make sure we get the right one right there and we can mark seam so this is right on the bottom and the idea is you know there's always going to be a seam no matter what so we might as well put it somewhere where it's less likely to show up and that's probably right on the bottom so now that we've got these seams we can select all of these with a and we can unwrap this, not the Smart UV Project. We can unwrap it. And what that does is now you can see those circles are a little bit better. And this was unwrapped in such a way that it, it looks a little better. OK, so that's pretty good. And I'm pretty happy with it. So of course, I want to make this a lot smaller. But first, let's. Let's get the pipes back. So we can do Alt H and that will bring back those pipes. And they're actually selected, which is convenient. But if for some reason they're not selected, you can go ahead and select them again. Well, actually, we don't want them selected. So Alt A. We want to select one of these edges here. And maybe let's make it easier on ourselves. We'll select linked on this thing and we'll hide this. And let's. Click on one of these and we will hit period to focus on the number pad. Uh, I just realized this darn screencast keys. Is that why is it not showing up? It's turned on. I'm sorry, I'm not sure why it's not showing up. So we're going to select one of these, maybe like this ring here, and do Alt and click. And then we'll select this ring and we'll do UV mark seam. And then we probably want to pick one of these rings at the bottom here. So we'll, we'll zoom in on this guy. Alt, select this ring, and we'll do UV mark seam. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So let me select over here and hit the period key. It really isn't super important to do like the finest details all the time, but you'll get a much cleaner looking object if you do take the time to do it. So. UV mark seam. Okay, so now I've got these 
And if I want to, I can hit A and I can unwrap them like that. Okay, so now in object mode, this looks a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to just make sure that I do Alt H to unhide everything. And I want to show you a couple different things. So one thing we can do is we can fix the scaling on this so that it looks a little bit better. So we're going to go into our shading mode and we're going to apply a transform to this. So we're going to create a new node. We'll go add. We can search for texture coordinate and we want to feed the UV into a mapping vector. So that node needs to be created as well. So we'll go search mapping vector, or just mapping, sorry. So we want to pass UV into this vector, and then we want to pass this into here. Nothing happens yet because we didn't change anything, but if we change the scale here to something like maybe five, now this is scaled up, so it is going to tile this, tex this texture. And if you look closely, there's a little, there's a little uh, imperfection in the material here that shows up here and here. So you can see that this is in fact tiling, but it's not really noticeable from a distance. And now this gives us a little bit better look at how this material will apply to our, our pillow. Now, what if we wanted to have a different material here? Well, we can do that. All we have to do is go into edit mode and we can select the faces that we want to be a different material. Now, we've got this piping here. Probably want to hide this again, so I'm going to select linked, select linked H, and then we'll do it with this one too. Select linked, oops, I did the wrong one. Select linked H, okay. Now what we'll do is we'll select this end cap here. So I can actually probably do select uh, similar and we want similar direction, nope. Probably should have figured this out ahead of time. Select similar face angles. Oh, that almost worked. All right, we're going to do this the, uh, the guaranteed way. So I hit C on my keyboard, and then I'm going to just select all of these like this. All right, that didn't work. Okay, I apologize for this. It's sometimes a little bit difficult, especially when you're viewing it in material mode. I'm going to show you one more trick. C and then I clicked on that to select all of these, hit enter. Then you can do control and then plus on your number pad, and that'll select more. It's, it's like a select additional stuff on top. So I finally have what I want selected. And then I'm going to apply a new material to this. So if we go into material mode, I'm gonna click the plus. This will create a new slot and I want to click new, and then we'll call this like maybe fabric two, not very inspired. And then we'll say assign. And what this will do is it will assign a different material to these faces. And now all we have to do is add a texture, input text or image texture, and we can pass in one of those fabrics that was in here. I'm going to do fabric one here, or color one. And you remember that we have to do a couple nodes here to make this work. So we need to add a mapping here. Sorry, I'm on the wrong side of this. So we need a mapping here. And we're going to need a texture coordinate texture coordinate here. UV goes in here. We're going to do five, five. Well, let's, let's actually make this one a little fatter. So we'll do maybe three, 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 and then we can pass this in here. And now we've got this different texture here. And maybe I'll make this even bigger. 
So we got sort of this fat, chunky material over here and then this smaller one over here. So I won't bother going through the, the trouble of doing the other side as well, but you see how this could work. And maybe you don't like the angle of this. That's something that we can do. While we have this selected, that's convenient. We can go back into UV editing mode and you can select this entire island either by going like this or by clicking on one of these other selection modes. You can go to this one, it'll select the whole item. And then you can hit R to rotate this and then you can rotate it however you like. So you can see what's happening here is all these faces have this material applied where they are in space in the in the UV map. And if we select everything, you'll see these are all placed here. So if I maybe didn't like the layout of this one either, maybe I, for some reason, I wanted it to be in a different spot. Well, let's give a better example here. I'll select this one. Let's say I, I wanted the white to be along the edge for some reason. Maybe I move this over here until I get it like that. So in general, I will say that it doesn't very much matter with your UV mapping if there are some things that overlap, especially if you're in different materials like this, like a red and, and the blue one, doesn't matter at all. Uh, where you end up with some trouble perhaps, and you can switch between these up here, is if you have a material that is obviously different in certain spots. You wouldn't want to overlap these right here if they were sharing a similar part of the texture and it was obvious that you had overlapped them. The other thing is there's lots more to UV mapping and I can't possibly cover it all in this one video, but there is more, more to learn here. And you can check out this UV menu here you can check it out over here, see all your different options. I kind of learned this just by trial and error, to be honest, and sometimes having to search for different tips on this. But eventually, you know, once you spend some time with this, you'll be able to figure out what works and what gets you the result that you're looking for. Now, I do want to mention that even though we have this really nice looking material that's been applied here, if we export this, as an FBX file for import into something like Unity or Unreal Engine, the material will not go with it, or at least I haven't figured out how to make that happen, but the UV mapping will. So you apply your UV maps in Blender and you do your separate material slots, but the materials won't go with it. So as long as you have multiple slots, you can apply multiple materials in Unity or Unreal Engine, but you'll have to recreate the materials inside of Unity or Unreal Engine. So that thing we did with the texture coordinates and all that, none of this will persist. You'll have to basically redo this, which isn't terribly complicated to do in that other program that you're working in. So hopefully this has been helpful. I know that UV mapping was sort of an a light bulb moment for me when I was 3D modeling. I, I couldn't quite wrap my head around why shadows weren't working properly sometimes. And I just, I mentioned that because in Unreal Engine in particular, it uses a UV map for applying shadows to objects. So if you have a weird UV map and things are overlapping, it may try to apply a shadow to something that then shows up in another spot if your UVs are messed up. So it's always good to have a nice clean UV map for lighting, but that's that's an entirely different topic and, and involves Unreal Engine, so I won't go into that. But hopefully this has been helpful uh, and you've learned a lot about how UV mapping works in this and at least gets you started with where you would go looking for help if you uh, had trouble with your particular problem, sort of what you could search for. That wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please let us know what you thought in the comments and let us know if you know, you're looking for something in particular in this series or in future videos and we'll definitely consider all of your suggestions and either way we appreciate all of you so much. Thank you.